Good morning, Warhawks. I have so much gratitude to be here speaking on behalf of the graduate class of 2023. I want you to think back to kindergarten as we're here today. Who is your teacher? Who did you sit next to? What did your backpack look like? Did you get chocolate milk or white milk? What did you like to play at recess? Would you have ever imagined that you would be here? Personally, I wouldn't have. I've had a complicated relationship with school since the time I was in kindergarten when I was first diagnosed with cancer. My cancer was in my kidney and it was the size of a Nerf football, so it pushed up my lungs and my liver over my heart. So they had to remove my kidney and the tumor, and I had major surgery, followed by chemotherapy. So I ended up missing the majority of kindergarten. But who needs the ABCs anyways, am I right? I relapsed in second grade this time, the cancer was in my lungs. I had more surgery, chemotherapy, I lost my hair, and this time I had radiation. I was impatient so much that I ended up spending every holiday in the hospital, even the weird ones like Groundhog's Day. I got cancer for the third time when I was in third grade. This time was different though, because I was older, wiser at age eight, and I knew what I was fighting. My doctors had no answers for me, and they gave me a 2% chance of survival. When my parents first told me this, we were sitting on a beach and the sun was setting, and I remember saying to them, I'm not ready to die. I have more to do here. So we searched around the country for some miracle treatment, talked to a doctor in California, and we decided to do five months of high-dose chemotherapy, followed by a bone marrow stem cell transplant, where I spent 50 days straight in the hospital. Despite the 98% chance that I wouldn't make it, I did. But even today, all these years later, I still face side effects that impact me daily. I have missed over 650 days of school. So when I did go to school, as you can imagine, I was very behind, both academically and socially. Fast forward to my junior year of high school, and it was hard for me to comprehend college. I had worked extremely hard to catch up. I was regularly attending my classes, and my grades were significantly better. Yet, I still worried that I would fail. Everyone told me that college was twice as hard as high school. I couldn't picture myself attending any of the universities that I visited. Well, that is until I came to Whitewater, of course. What pushed me into saying yes to becoming a Warhawk was the Center for Students with Disabilities. I finally had a group of people behind me that wanted me to succeed and not just pass. Last year, I went through another major surgery. And outside the months it took me to physically recover, I hit my breaking point. I faced many challenges, like missing weeks of school again and dealing with PTSD. The surgery caused rifts with my friends and my family, while overall taking a large toll on my mental health. I worked hard to keep up in class, go back to dance, go to therapy, and I poured out my emotions into my artwork. The art department here has played a big part in supporting me as it has served as a safe place for me to continue my past and present traumas. But even a year later, it still felt like I hadn't made enough progress. To make things worse, I was going to start student teaching. 
and I was going to be at an elementary school. And it wasn't any elementary school, but it was my elementary school. The school I used to silently cry at my desk, the school I used to spend hours hiding in the bathroom to avoid going to class. I was ready for the worst. And when I first started, I wasn't far off. I went through a period of grief as I experienced all the things that I missed out on on my childhood firsthand. Even the silly things like skipping down the hallway, making shamrocks for St. Patrick's Day, things like that. I also could not ignore how small and innocent my students were, especially those little kindergartners. But then, something unexpected happened. I started to heal in the very place where I had felt most broken. My cooperative teacher and students poured so much love onto me that I couldn't help but be filled with joy. Giving students hugs, receiving pictures, making memories, and most importantly, making students laugh and feel like they belonged. It made, a, it, made it one of the most enjoyable and rewarding experiences for me. Teaching has healed a part of my inner child as it has reminded me of just how far I've come. I've been fighting to get to this point in my life since I was five years old. After battling cancer three times, I did not know if I would live long enough, if I would be smart enough to even dream of going to college, let alone excelling, earning a 4.0, and speaking at commencement. Yet, here I am. We are going to face difficult things in our lives. We are going to have setbacks that set us back so far we don't know if we will ever catch up. We're going to experience heartbreak and loss. I mean, we already have. One thing we have all faced is continuing our education through a global pandemic when the world all but stopped turning. But if there is one thing that I have learned about overcoming difficult things, is not only how to survive them, but how to continue living. Despite everything I have gone through, or maybe because of everything I've gone through, I have an immense amount of gratitude. I thank Jesus every day, and I wouldn't trade the life he has given me for anything, despite people telling me I have the worst luck from anyone they've ever met. <laughs> we are not guaranteed or entitled to time on this earth. So I plan to make every day count by finding joy and sharing it. When I was first diagnosed with cancer, I made bracelets, necklaces, and cards for the other kids in the hospital. Although I was confused, angry, and upset, as any five-year-old, or anyone at that matter. During my darkest time, I chose to bring some light to others. I may not know what tomorrow will bring me, but I do know that I can make a difference today by making my five-year-old self proud. She would be blown away. <laughs> so when you feel like you are at your breaking point, Remember who you were as a kid. Remember where you started. And remember just how much you've already accomplished. Look back to this day, to this moment, and know that you can do it. Warhawk graduates of 2023, you should be incredibly proud of yourself for making it here today. You made that happen. There are so many small moments that led you here. From Warhawk Welcome, to Painting the Road Purple, 
to your first night sleeping in a dorm room, floor meetings, late night snacks at P Street, even though you have an assignment due at 11.59, hot football games with the cannons going off in Perkins Stadium, mornings studying in the UC, if you're anything like me, plenty of all-nighters. <laughs> Hanging out with your friends, laughing so hard until you can't breathe and tears are streaming down your face. Slipping on ice when walking to class in the middle of winter. All the way up to your last lecture and your last day of being a student since the time you were in kindergarten. Today is a busy day, so I want us to take a moment to soak up this achievement. If you feel comfortable, I invite you to put a hand over your heart and feel it beating. Remember what everything looks like, how it feels to wear your cap and gown, what things sound like, the people here with you today. And most importantly, how you feel inside. We will always have today. And we will always be Warhawks. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs>